Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 230, and our title this today is The Beginning of Sorrows, Part 3. Scripture indicates the current reality shift that we're beginning to enter into will begin at the pronouncement of judgment by the Lord. There's going to be a pronouncement of judgment <coughs> at which <coughs> there's going to be a reality shift from what we're currently experiencing to an altered state of existence. Turn to Jeremiah 25, verse 30. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation, referring to the earth. He shall give a shout, as they that tread, against all the inhabitants of the earth. So this is going to be a judgment in which the whole human race is going to be targeted. We see this repeated. Turn to Luke 21, verse 34 to 36. We're going to read, be reading verses 34 to 36. Impending okay. judgment. And take heed, there, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, that that day come upon you unawares. He's talking to Christians here. And he's telling them that the judgment is going to be unexpected. People are going to be going about their business in a world that's in turmoil to begin with. <clears throat> and they're going to be busily trying to maintain their own life situation <clears throat> when this judgment is pronounced. Notice what it says in verse 35. For as a snare shall it come on all, A-L-L, -L, all them that dwell upon the face of the whole earth. Now this is unprecedented because the judgments that you read in Scripture are all up to this point regional. A fall on this nation, a fall on that nation, uh, Israel going to captivity to all the nations, but I've never seen, I've never seen a judgment pronounced on the whole human race mm. until this one. What do we understand from the fact that it's the whole human race at this time? Be uh, we're talking about a time in which <clears throat> everything will be global at the time of this particular judgment. So it's the end Up of until an this point, <clears throat> the whole human race, although it's under a death sentence, right. has not been active in the scripture. Okay. Scripture pertains basically to Israel and the things pertaining to the nations around them, which are consistently undergoing wars and judgments and things along that line. But this is the first judgment spoken about on mankind as a whole. How is this con judgment connected with the four corners of the land from YHVH? Uh, well, that basically has to do with a part of a judgment, uh, this judgment itself, but it's giving you that particular space. It's focusing on what's going to happen at that point in time when this judgment falls. Okay. So we should understand that the two judgments are in concert. Yes. Okay. Yes. Anything dealing with modern day activities, there's basically going to be, you're looking at spinoffs from the overall right. picture. We talked about Ezekiel 32. Mm -hmm. That's part of this judgment okay. also. So everything has, but, but it's, it's, it's predicated off of a plurality of existence. Having a thing 
in which it's not centered in one linear event. It's multiplicity of things happening simultaneously because that's how God's going to operate. So he warns in verse 35 it's going to come as a snare. What is a snare? A snare is a net. It's a trap. It's something that's going to catch somebody unawares and then trap them. The whole human race is going to be caught up in a snare and a trap that it's not expecting. It's going to happen suddenly. The only thing they're going to know about it is they're going to hear the voice of the Lord pronounce it because that's what the scripture says. He's going to shout from on high a judgment against the whole human race. And when he pronounces that judgment, then the, then the hammer is going to fall on mankind. There's the implication that in the shouting, people will understand that he's actually saying, this is the judgment upon you. Oh, yes. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Must will, will there be some I, that be exempt from it? When maybe it, the very handful of people? Verse 36. Verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Yes, that's the escape clause. You do what the scripture here is saying and we won't be part of that judgment. If you do what the scripture is saying. Yes. And are fully committed. Yes. Amen. Now we're going to see how extensive this thing is. Turn back to Jeremiah 25. And we're going to okay. go down. Okay, we're going to go down to see how devastating this judgment is going to be on the human race. Verse 31, down to verse 33. A noise, the word noise here is sound, shall come even to the ends of the earth. So it's talking about a release of something that's going to envelop the whole world. It's going to engulf the entire earth. For the Lord had a controversy with the nations, <coughs> the families of the human race. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. So evil is going to go forth to every cultural, language, racial group on the face of the earth. It's going to engulf the whole human race. You should understand that verse, that verse 31 is the beginning of sorrows. Mm -hmm. This noise, where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. Who's creating the noise? Is it a, is it a spirit? Is it a being? Demons. 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 Is it, is it, is Demons is it, are going to influence whole human race to turn on itself. So this noise is like a hypnotic or an instru instruction or a brainwash or... Well, the word noise means sound. Sound. Yeah. So it's talking about a particular sound from the release of these demons okay. on the human race. Why would it affect the humans? Because it's judgment against humanity. That's what we were saying. He's pronouncing a judgment on the human race. This is the judgment, a release of demons to incite men to destroy themselves. Are the demons coming from the subterranean region? Mm -hmm. For the most so part. So would you consider them to be part of the lesser kings and the fourth empire? I would consider them to be those that have been held for a particular time when they're going to be released on the human race. Did they go down with Lucifer and his compatriots when he fell? I would say probably so. Okay. Yeah. You yes, see any... Young. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I don't know when I, I don't want to mess up your, your 
your plan here, but uh, how does this, I know it's the beginning of sorrows, but is it pre-gathering? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is what sets the gathering in motion. You're going to see an example of this release of demons. Keep your finger in Jeremiah, turn over to Revelation, 16th chapter. As we're turning, mm -hmm. when did you mm -hmm. receive the understanding that demons made this noise at the beginning of Sorrows? From Revelation 16. But when did you receive that understanding? Recently. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know we have to question you carefully, Brother Richard. <laughs> carefully. Uh, 16? Yes, Revelation 16, verses 13 to 14. You see, you see a, a repetition of this. Revelation 16, verse 13. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils demons working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty so these are demonic seducing spirits that incite to destruction or deceive to set men in motion in a certain direction. <coughs> However they're programmed to operate, that's the way they're going to operate. Okay. In this case, turn back to Jeremiah 25, they're programmed to incite the human race right. to destruction. But in this case, Elohim does the releasing. Yes. In that case that we've just read, Elohim the, does the same thing by by influencing the unholy three to do the okay. That's very interesting. It's all Elohim. Jeremiah twenty five. Okay. Jeremiah twenty Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Mm -hmm. So the whole world from one end of the earth to the other is going to be littered with the bodies of the human race. Evil. Nobody there to bury them. Evil men that come under this judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And John, how are the people killed? <clears throat> Kill each other. Mm. Any way possible. In the same manner that the daughters of the famous nations killed each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, turn to Luke <clears throat> 21. In order for that many people to die, it was Joseph nuclear. No. No. Demonic incitation sets one individual against another. One person could be standing five feet away from somebody else, so they jump on him and attack him and kill him. Well, you see that happening now. Yeah, exactly. People are bugging out. Sure. This guy that just wiped out all these people, sure. this is demonic. Luke 21, verse 10. <clears throat> then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation. The word nation there is the same terminology comes from what our term ethnic group in the Hebrew is goi it means non-Israelite 
person is talking about the families of men turning on each other. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The, the word kingdom there is where we would, we would uh, look at our word country. You're going to have global war, which is a result of the uprising of humanity against itself. Uh, incited by demons. You couldn't get this basically from an atomic conflagration because an atomic conflagration would incinerate the bodies. But the bodies are laying there unburied, meaning that they wiped each other out and there's nobody left alive. Is the implication that these demons have already been released somewhat based on the behavior of humans? You just mentioned sure. this guy who wiped everybody out. Pretty sure. Much. Sure. So is that the, the precursor of the judgment? Sure. The guy that's responsible for it is Satan. <clears throat> He's going to wipe everything out because God's going to allow him to do it as a result of a judgment. Turn to, turn to um, Isaiah 14. Now, don't think that this is the end of the human race. People are going to survive this and go on. This right. isn't even the tribulation period. This right. is the beginning of sorrow. So you're looking at the start of everything. And the first thing that happens is the Lord's voice from on high. Yes. Yes. Isaiah 14 Verse 12, so this whole passage refers to Lucifer, Satan. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Weaken the nations. Drown, he drained the human race turned it against each other. Drop down to verse um, verse 16 and 17. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying is this the man that made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Satan's going to be the instrument yeah. in which all of this destruction is saying he's, he's already doing it. Mm -hmm. If he had his way, he would do it right away because he wants the human race out of the picture. God's not going to allow that. But God is allowing incrementally things to happen so that people with a sight can see what's going on and turn to God. Amen. But the more things happen, the more stubborn <laughs> the human race gets, particularly Christians, mm -hmm. they dig in their heels, don't want to hear the truth, and, uh, you know, God will reach a point where he says, okay, that's it, and he's going to pronounce his judgment against the whole human race. Now turn back to Jeremiah 25. Who's he holding responsible for all this? The church. Why? Because they have the truth. They have the word. <coughs> Unsaved people aren't expected to understand this, but Christians are. So the church is going to bear the, the church leadership is going to bear the brunt of all of this. Verse 34. Okay. Howl, ye shepherds, and cry, and wallow yourselves in the ashes, ye principal of the flock. It's talking about 
church leadership, the elders, the deacons, the individuals who had responsibility to speak the whole counsel of God and did not. For the days of your slaughter and your dispersions are accomplished, and you shall fall like a pleasant vessel, and the shepherds shall have no way to flee, nor the principal of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and an howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard, for the Lord had spoiled their pastor's judgment on the church leadership. Turn to Jeremiah 23. Okay. Verse 1 to 2. Well be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock, driven them away, have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather... Yes. Yes. Guys, being in the park, measure up to this scripture that we just read. <laughs> uh, you could say so, yes. We're scattered, brother Bryce. <laughs> <clears throat> Verse three, and I will gather, gather, the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. I can't, I can't emphasize enough what the scripture is saying here. There is going to be a dispersal. There's going to be a gathering. A gathering of Israel back to the land and a gathering of the church. Those who have been faithful to the Lord. Now, what you find, this is repeated consistently in various aspects of the scripture. Turn to Ephesians, the first chapter. Okay. And when you get there, we want Verses 9 to 10. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. What is his will? According to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time. He might gather, he might gather, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. We are not looking for the rapture, we're looking for the gathering. The, gathering. Mm -hmm. the saints have been not, not been given the word of God. Turn to Acts, 20th chapter, we'll close with this. Twentieth chapter. Verse twenty six and twenty seven. Paul sets the example of what a leader should be doing because he's going to be held responsible for what he has prepared those under his authority to do. Acts twenty. 26 to 27. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel 
of God. All the counsel of God is not being taught to the people. People are being spoon-fed parts of different things, repetitive principles. They need to hear the whole counsel of God so they can prepare themselves for the things coming on this world. Absolutely. Noah preached one doctrine, one message 120 years and that was the coming judgment you tell me you look out here and you see the things that are happening judgment is about to fall and christians are not being warned what are they being told you can get blessings uh, god is uh, some kind of a cosmic vending machine that all you got to do is uh, your time has come to get your blessing. Man, it's time to turn to God. It's time to understand God's hand is about to fall on the whole human race and we better be ready so that we can escape the judgment that's going to fall on this world. Jesus warns about it several times. The prophets warned about it several times and still it's not being passed on to where it should be. Amen. Yes, sir. What's the name of that park that you guys are in right now? This Somerset Park. Somerset. Because where else are we going to hear what we're supposed to hear? So we got to go to Sunset Park. <laughs> Somerset. 